When Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps dropped commandos on an oil tanker in the middle of April this year, they were sending a number of messages to the world. One, of course, is that Iran has the power to antagonize its rivals. Iran says the Portuguese-registered MSC Ares had violated maritime law. But it was also quick to point out the ship has links with Israel and Israel and Iran have been trading aerial assaults. But what Iran really wanted was for every major capital in the world to notice where they had boarded that tanker. It happened close to the world economy's most vulnerable choke point, a sea lane through which one-fifth or more of all the oil and natural gas has to pass to reach global markets. I'm talking about the Strait of Hormuz. I'm Dani Nabugeta. This is Pinch Point, where politics and geography collide. The strategic importance of this narrow seaway is, well, huge. It's the only route between the Gulf and the Gulf of Oman, and from there, the rest of the world. At its narrowest point, it's just 33 kilometers wide, with just two sea lanes, one in and one out, each one just three kilometers wide. Some 33,000 ships pass through it every year. That's about 90 a day, most delivering a total of 21 million barrels of oil worth $1.2 billion. It's the world's busiest shipping lanes, supplying economic power players across the globe. China, the world's second largest economy, imports about half its oil from countries in the Gulf region. Japan, third in the global economic size list, imports 95% of its crude oil from the Middle East. South Korea imports 71% of its crude from the Middle East. And of course, these big three also send their cars and fridges and electrical goods back to the Gulf states through the Strait of Hormuz, as do the eight nations that border the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, Iraq, and of course, Iran. And here's where the oil is. You're looking at the largest known reserves in the world. One field in Saudi Arabia alone supplies more than 6% of the world's oil supplies. And that splodge of red? Well, that's natural gas. There's loads of that across the region, too. Qatar is one of the world's biggest players in liquefied natural gas. Iran is thought to have the biggest reserves. Yes, there are pipelines from Saudi Arabia to the Red Sea and from the UAE to the Gulf of Oman, but close to 90% of all oil leaving the Gulf goes through the Strait of Hormuz. Remember, that's more than a fifth of all the petroleum liquids we use from Anchorage in the west to Vladivostok in the east, northern Norway to southern New Zealand, which is why the US government describes it as a choke point critical to global energy security. It's also a major reason for the US planting these military bases across the region. 30,000 US soldiers are stationed there. The largest base is in Qatar. The fifth fleet is right next door in Bahrain. With it, two aircraft carriers, 20 ships, 103 strike aircraft, and 20,000 sailors and marines. For its part, Iran has military bases along its coastline with a navy, drones, and mine layers. And tensions have rarely been higher, fed by decades-long mutual suspicion, ratcheted up massively as Israel intensifies its long-running military campaign against Iran and the groups it backs as the war on Gaza continues. In July, the Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh was assassinated in the Iranian capital Tehran. Iran blames Israel. Hours earlier, an Israeli airstrike killed Hezbollah commander Fuad Shikr in the Lebanese capital Beirut. Early in April, an airstrike on Iran's consular building in Damascus killed two Iranian generals and five military advisors. Iran blamed Israel and fired more than 300 drones and missiles in retaliation. It then followed up with the latest of a series of threats that it could close the Strait of Hormuz anytime it wanted. If the Strait of Hormuz is shut down, that, that hurts Iran and it hurts the world, but it also could impact other countries' oil in the Middle East getting to, to market. It hasn't happened yet. The wheels of diplomacy and power politics are racing, but the Strait of Hormuz can be seen as a tap that feeds oil to the world. Turn it off, and few, if any, can foresee the consequences.